So you guys, we talked about the the differences in the labels that, that you guys work for or and slash own. And I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of talk about your perspective for what's important for your label and then we'll move into um, talking about the signing process. Being a small label, um, being an owner operator, it's important to me um, that when we sign a band, there's some momentum with the band coming in the door. That's a really attractive thing to us. and. Um, I've been a manager since I was 18, and I was 18 20 years ago. I was still in high school 20 years ago. As a manager, I used to sign bands to major labels, or I used to sign bands who were signed to major labels, and there was this culture of sitting on the couch and asking the label, what have you done for me lately? And that used to work, sort of, but today, that doesn't work at all, and it certainly doesn't work for a label as small as Danger Bird. So we, we really do like to have that cooperative, um, shared reality that's so important and it's not saying hey we'll sign you and own your masters and you can do all the work it's it's you guys know what it means it means we all have to chip in more than ever these days to build culture and to build um, the message of the meaning of the band always you know, and to sort of talk about the inertia I think what what you what you look for when you when you're trying to find a band to work with is a band that in theory is not waiting for you to come sign them they're out playing shows are out touring, they're putting their own records out, they're putting out vinyl, they're, you know, they're active on their social networks, they're not, you know, more times than not the bands that, that I've most wanted to sign, um, I don't want to say they were ambivalent about signing, but they weren't waiting around to get a deal before they were moving forward, so it's really important to, to not wait for one of us to get things going. Chris, why don't you talk a little bit about Atlantic and your experience as an a person getting things done inside of a major label there's all kinds of discussion okay. around that okay uh, yeah our expectations I guess um, from the top up kind of change every day when I came in um, there was an opportunity to do something in research I didn't know what that was um, and actually nobody could really tell me because they didn't have anyone that was doing it um, but what I thought and what I kind of took from that suggestion was um, you know how can I find bands, or I should be looking at things that other people aren't looking at, and I should be bringing in things that have some type of momentum outside of, you know, oh, I think this band is great. Um, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to have to go up and, and fight another person or be in, um, you know, in, in a type of game with someone where, you know, it was my taste against someone, someone else's. So I would find, you know, my job was to find something that I thought was great, and then see if I could find some like qualifying evidence about that act. Uh, maybe they're selling some records here. Uh, maybe they're uh, doing a particular number of tickets a night. Um, maybe they're selling merch. Um, anything, or you know, maybe they've got a ton of press, or they're doing well online. Um, anything that can kind of help support my case for, for a band that I wanted to sign. And, you know, I would venture outside of the traditional area. So the, the like, misconception that you can't really be found outside of L.A. or New York or, you know, a big, um, you know, center, big city uh, is wrong because for me, that's where I would go and find bands. I'd find bands that didn't have, um, you know, the means to get out of, you know, their small town, but we're doing great there. Or we're getting on local radio or, um, you know, we're selling out their, you know, local venues. But didn't know or couldn't really connect the dots to get to, you know, the bigger cities. When you go to these other cities, which I, I mainly stay away from LA and I and I don't go out in New York as much as I used to, I, I do go to these like tertiary rural places because that's the people who, who go to Walmart and Target and Best Buy and Kmart and all these places that, you know, you, people hate to, you know, don't really want to talk about, but there are people who actually go and buy records and not industry people, and you know that's important because that's what keeps our jo keeps our jobs and keeps us all in the business. Um, in, in the beginning, you know, we all would be running around everywhere trying to chase everything, and you know, I, fortunately, I have you know all these gatekeepers around that send me music, and and I trust a lot of their their taste, and so it saves a lot of the footwork for us. And um, also, I like that. People can just send me a link to something, and I can see immediately like what they look like live, and if there's an audience, and what they're you know what they've built, and and, and the, the the platform has been leveled so that you know it doesn't even matter. It's not a money issue. It's really like are they good and what have they done, and and then we can you ascertain that from your desk, and then once you see that, if you're intrigued and you then if you love it, then then I go and 
I get on the plane. I mean, for me, meeting them and seeing it and kind of, I, I, I like to see the audience as much as I like to see the band and who the demographic is and how they're reacting and are they just their friends and family or are they real people? I, I can, I've only met a couple of you guys very recently, but uh, I know that we all put our hearts into our jobs and, um, and uh, I know this is the only life I've got, so whoever I get into business with, whether it's a band on the label or a band we publish or someone, someone we manage, it takes a lot of my time and I put a lot of care into it. And so I really, um, I really try to, like Michael said, make sure that I, I'm really there and I'm not just chasing it because everybody else wants it. That hardly ever happens to us. We don't really, I don't know, we just, we don't really sign stuff that other people are looking at or whatever, but it's just a matter of like, You've only got one life, so you have to make sure that the people you're in business with on both sides of that equation really matter. And you really think you could do a kick-ass job for them, and with them, and around them. And uh, that's a big deal to me. I spend a lot of time trying to ascertain that, and I have walked away from a couple deals recently because about 90% of the way into doing a deal, I thought, you know, this just isn't for us. And um, that's a cool thing. That's a really good thing. And sometimes I gather maybe bands have said that about us too, because <laughs> well, not everyone signs with you, you know, it just happens. But that's a cool thing, right? Yeah, it's very cool. We're at a point in the world, right, where um, fewer people are, are, are making it huge. And there's a lot more people making it like, you know, in the middle and below, which is still pretty darn good. So it's sort of like there's an emphasis put on, or a premium put on, you know, having a good experience because you can't just sit on the couch and say, what have you done for me lately? Okay.